says that now usually I tell my uh, wife and my children to follow the Quran and the authentic hadith and that is it so am I right or am I wrong well you're right and you're wrong Allah Azza wa Jal would ask us on the day of judgment about two things what we used to worship what, what were you worshipping? Allah. So this is sincerity. Uh, uh, and also, What did you respond to the messengers? And this is in compliance of following the Prophet Now, to come to a layman, to come to someone who doesn't know Arabic, or someone who knows Arabic but doesn't understand the Sharia itself and tell him only follow the Quran and Sunnah if I give you a ayah from the Quran you will not be able to understand it says yes wait one second I have to go to Tafsir Ibn Kathir uh, Tafsir Al-Tabari in this case you're following Ibn Kathir and Al-Tabari if I give you a, a hadith and you're unable to understand it, say, let me check what Ibn Hajar said about it. Let me check what uh, uh, Imam so-and-so said about it. Then you're following the Imam. So it is not your intellect. It is not your own logic that allows you to follow the Quran Sunnah. However, we usually say, and you have to remember the Shamim. We follow as us, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, as Salafis, Ahl al-Hadith. We follow the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the righteous predecessors, which includes the four Imams of uh, 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 the Fiqh, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. So you cannot simply say, I follow only the Quran and Sunnah. No, this is not realistic. Even those Salafis who say so, if you give them a hadith, they say, yes, Sheikh al-Albani authenticated it. Then you're following al-Albani. But we do not neglect the fact that we follow the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf. So we do not blind follow Abu Hanifa, may Allah be pleased with him, or Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, may Allah be pleased with them all. No, we do not blind follow them. We look at their verdicts and we cross-reference it with the Quran and the Sunnah. If the Quran and Sunnah approves of it, yes. And I'll give you an example that... The three Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Malik, and Shafi'i, say that eating the meat of camel does not nullify your wudu. Only Imam Ahmad said that it does nullify wudu. Who should I follow? I follow the hadith in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, where the Prophet was asked in the same incident about making wudu after eating mutton meat. He said, if you wish, up to you. And then he was asked, what about eat, uh, making wudu after eating camel's meat? He said, yes. So who should I follow? The three great imams or the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? Definitely the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ.